the next artist we're going to talk about is Elizabeth Thompson. That's her maiden name. And she marries Lord Butler and becomes uh, Lady Butler. So she's uh, sometimes known as uh, just simply as Lady Butler. She is British and she picked the most unusual subject for a woman artist. She is a military painter. And she was very, very highly thought of as a military painter. Uh, she generally doesn't show the bloodshed of the battle. She's usually, she, sometimes she will do something, we'll see a, a, a battle scene, but um, she's usually depicting before the battle or after the battle. Uh, and with incredible accuracy. Um, this is a drawing that she did for a painting called The Forced March. And as you can see, uh, the horses and the men are starving and dying by the wayside. Um, so it shows the suffering of war as well as the glory of war. Um, generally, this image was very patriotic. Remember that this is the time uh, when the British Empire is uh, spanning the entire globe, uh, and they're often enforcing that with their uh, military might. And so uh, some of these uh, battles are seen as great victories, sometimes as great losses. Um, but they are very historical and usually fairly recent history. But she's, she's not exactly contemporary, but very recently. In 1873, she had uh, her first painting that was exhibited at the Royal Academy. Um, and she, and she was so well thought of that she was almost elected to the Royal Academy in 1879. Um, she missed election by only two votes. And no woman was elected. I had read one place, it was the 1920s, but I found another place where it said exact date and gave the name, name of the woman. Uh, in 1936, 1936 um, was the first woman elected uh, to the Royal Academy since its founding in 1760. And remember, we had several founding members, such as Angelica Kaufman and uh, Mosher, uh, were the two founding members. So they were the, they were, they got in on the first group, and then no more women were allowed in the Royal Academy. Um, the only reason not to elect her would be her gender. Um, because she had the high quality of work and she was doing a subject that uh, males would certainly find appropriate, uh, or not appropriate for a woman, but males would find um, a worthy and lofty subject. And uh, she was just as good and better than <laughs> uh, many of the men who were in the Royal Academy. Um, I, there are just many, many of these, but we'll just show you a few. This one's called ro Roll Call. Uh, and as you can see, the troops are uh, standing out to be reviewed. Uh, evidently, they are in quite bad shape. Someone has collapsed here uh, from 1874. Um, the short title is Roll Call. Uh, the long title that really describes it is Calling the Roll After an Engagement, Crimea. And you remember the Crimean War, uh, that's the charge of light brigade, and was just devastating, horrible uh, for the British. Um, and so what you're seeing here is the men are all lined up, but they're bandaged. Uh, one of them is collapsed, maybe even dying. Um, this is after a battle. And I guess they're trying to find out who's still alive and possibly who could fight the next battle. Uh, this created a sensation at the Royal Academy in 1874. Uh, and when I say a sensation, uh, it was just considered to be such an a, amazing military painting. Um, Queen Victoria herself purchased the painting. And there were prints made of the painting, and this made the artist famous. Uh, you know, people would, if they didn't see the original, which of course was then be in the Queen's collection, um, they would see the reproductions. Now, how did she create her work? She insisted on historical accuracy. Obviously, she wasn't at these battles. But what she did, and I don't have any idea exactly how she got the pull to do that. Uh, certainly, uh, after she was married, her husband uh, may have had 
some influence. Um, but also, as she made her reputation, uh, the, the military was willing to do some of these things for her. Um, but one of the things she would do would be pose the troops in order to paint them. In other words, she would get um, actual military troops to model for her. And she would you know, have them lined up and uh, um, in the poses that she wanted. I think this is a photograph of uh, the troops that she had lined up for roll call. Um, just another work, Return to Inkerman. The compositions here are rather interesting too because you always have this feeling that they're, they're well composed um, but they're not slavishly regular. Um, so here you have you know, your officer on the horse and then all the other people who are milling around. Uh, and I, I will say that that just well, that flight of the birds that curves up uh, is just um, partially, uh, it's just a very, very well thought of detail. And you can see even here, even the rocks on the ground have their, their textures. Uh, so she is um, a very skillful painter. Uh, probably after roll call, <laughs> her other most famous painting is her most dramatic one. It's called Scotland Forever. Uh, it was created in 1881. It was the subject from uh, one of the most uh, popular battles, can, I guess you can say popular battles, uh, Waterloo, where finally, uh, finally uh, Napoleon was defeated. And of course, this was a great British victory and uh, probably a great victory for all of Europe. Um, uh, Napoleon certainly had world domination on his side. In England, he was called the monster. And uh, there was always the great terror that uh, Napoleon and the French would invade um, England. So um, all through the 18th century. So this, of course, is a historical picture. This is literally a history painting. And it's a painting of uh, the charge of the Scots Greys, uh, the cavalry uh, from uh, a Scottish, uh, I don't know the different divisions, but uh, uh, that was instrumental in the Battle of Waterloo. And so here you see this very dramatic picture uh, with the uh, Calvary officers uh, charging, officers and men, uh, charging uh, uh, the officer out in front, uh, kind, of a, kind of a V formation in very close formation. Uh, you certainly get the feeling of uh, the, the uh, horses rushing at you. Um, and that's exactly what she wanted to show. And of course, even though the clouds are dramatic, as you can see, she recreated the charge with 300 men of the Royal Engineers. <laughs> Um, so she was going to get this right, and she stood in front of the horseman, I guess drawing quickly, uh, and she had the troopers on horseback charge directly at her. So she could get this dramatic view uh, as though the horsemen were charging right at the viewer of the painting. And so here we have that uh, picture with the, the sketch, which is very, very free, uh, this action sketch. Uh, that uh, you know, sort of give you some of the essentials uh, of the feeling of movement, uh, the arrangement of the figures, uh, but just you know, very, very free.